This is it. Oh, we're on. We're okay. doing an, another history podcast. This time we've got the Colin Quinn. Yes. And today's topic is Vietnam. Vietnam. What a yeah. time. Yeah. What a crazy time. <laughs> hey. I mean, in some ways, I feel like it's the most important. It, it changed everything. Plus, it was at that time, you know? Yeah. But it changed. I always feel like these things have like bigger, like what comes first? Vietnam makes people, it, was it a revolution where everybody's like, we're fighting against the system or was Vietnam the thing that triggers it off? And it's, to, would it have happened without Vietnam? Would the 60s have happened without Vietnam? Yeah. Because Vietnam, as you know, I, I'm bringing about my extensive knowledge, started for America in the 40s. Yeah. And yeah. And it was um because we were helping France because we owed France from the Revolutionary War. We yeah, I was what? the the thing I've looked at it, dude, France dragged us into this to the point that's no like idea. Oh, France was France owned Vietnam. Mm -hmm. It was a colony. Japan took it when they went they got a little wild. Yeah, yeah. And then the United States liberated it. Okay. And the, that was the thing. Ho Chi Minh, the guy who ended up being the leader of the Viet Cong, was like I love America. That's he was right. Like, he was That's right. right. He was writing letters to Truman. That's saying, right. Like, I love you. Thank you. They were like, Americans are the only free people on earth. Yes. These are incredible people. The leader of them yeah, loved yeah. America. Yeah. And then he started, this is the craziest part. So France goes back in after the war and is like, we're taking it back. And America was like, Come on, don't do that. Yeah. And we, we were kind of siding with Ho Chi Minh and, mm. and the Vietnamese. And then France was like, this is the beginning of the Cold War. So France is like, hey, if you guys don't support us, maybe we'll start listening to from Russia. And then America was like, all right, we'll can help you out. Damn. Anyway. That is interesting. And by the way, speaking of Ho Chi Minh, writing letters to Truman, all those letters were redacted and like, yeah. to like 1970-something. Uh, and half of them Truman never got because the Secret Service was like, wow, he doesn't need to that. see these. Yeah. Yeah, making those decisions. Everybody made, but that's the whole thing about Vietnam too. Everybody's making their own decisions, determining. So the the when you have power, you know, when you disperse power in that way, everybody goes, "I'll take this part," and they're all just like, <laughs> and yeah, and because of the Cold War, the Secret Service and the CIA mm -hmm. were like, "This is more important." Like the CIA versus the KGB in Russia yeah, yeah. and the Soviet Union, that became the two superpowers. Yeah. yeah, and they were doing stuff like undermining the president to be like the war against Russia is more. I mean, it was, it's, it's. I I don't like Vietnam because but, of how frustrating and stupid it is. Well, but first of all, the CIA, when you think about it, their whole thing was the Cold War first. So all the drug dealing that happened in the seventies and eighties was again through from every cartel. The CIA when they like okay CIA they would stop the DEA from doing their job yeah. all the time. Because they're like, the Cold War, these are anti-communists, but they're the heads of the cartels, yeah, yeah. but they're anti-communists, and that was their priority. So they they made that choice, and I'm sure the president didn't want to make the choice, whoever it was, during yeah. all those times. But that was the choice they always made. Damn, then they did the Just Say No, like, 10 years later, like, come on, guys, don't do drugs. That's just funny. Say No, but <laughs> yeah, even yeah, yeah. Just Say No, so they were still telling the DEA back. Vietnam, the French. The French? the French are fucking dickheads. Dude. Brutal. They were dickheads. So they dragged us in. They, we they really, absolutely dragged us in. Well, hit the letters. they dragged us in, but we wanted into. I mean, we, we could have left. We could have left 10. We could have left. I mean, if you, I read this book, A Bright Shining Light. I just happened to be reading it. By the way, whenever you read a book, if, especially a Kindle, try to find out how many pages it is first. Oh, yeah. This book's 800 pages. <laughs> Fuck. So I was reading it like, oh, this is A Bright Shining Light. It doesn't sound yeah. like a long book. Yeah. It's the history of everything. But uh, but France, they left. We helped them. So there was one that would turn Ho Chi Minh. One of the things that turned him is we decided we supplied France with all these um all the mortars and everything where they destroyed a lot of it in Vietnam, and that turned yeah uh them against America too. Oh, Ho yeah. Chi Minh, yeah. yeah it, it was uh there was a battle. I forget the name of it. So I was just Dien watching Ben Burns on it. What is it? Dien Ben Phu. Yes. So the French. We're kind of fucking up the Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had it was the same as us versus them. They had yeah. superior firepower, but again, just like time and time again, the Vietnamese were very good at guerrilla warfare because we trained them during World War II. Oh yeah, yeah, a little you know mujahideen type shit. Yeah, and 
they were about to come to talks, France and Vietnam. They were about to come to the table. Before they went to have talks, they both tried to get one more offensive in. So they had leverage when they went to talks. Nice. So France sets up at, what's it? Bien, Den, Bien, Bien Fieu, yeah. They just put themselves at the bottom of this valley. And they're like, we're just going to build an airfield here. We're going to fuck them up. One of the French generals was like, I have too many guns. We're going to fuck these dudes up. Damn. And the Vietnamese surrounded them in this valley and just destroyed them. The French guy, the general that led that, killed himself honorably because he was like, we're going to wipe the floor with these guys. Why are they he, going to valley? Isn't that a bad? I'm not a military was, tactician, yeah, but isn't that like call. not the good idea? Yeah, it was a bad idea. Well, it's funny you say that because even Quezon, the famous uh, 19, 14 years later, America did the same thing. Set themselves up in a in, was surrounded by all the mountains, so created a valley and set up an airstrip, a landing strip <laughs> in the valley, and got killed because of it. Damn, I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, that, yeah. the other thing about Vietnam is you realize how, like, how you know you always think when you're young, at least, like the people in charge, they spend all their time doing this, they know what they're doing, but there were so many egos involved that mm. the few people who were like, "This is not working," were just they were just like. Stop. Yeah. You, you don't know what you're saying. Just because of ego. People think, oh, their Damn. motive was they wanted money. They would still get the money. This was about like something else. It's a power struggle that where you pay the price or the troops pay the price. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, if you're just some dude sitting in a village and some guy had an argument and you're just getting blown up and you're like, what's this about? <laughs> oh, and the other thing <laughs> that some guy was, couldn't come to grips with it. He was like, no, I'm right. <laughs> in the early 60s, they had this Hamlet program where they would bring, they said, we're going to bring all these weapons to each hamlet all these little hamlets because it was kind of half and half like north korea mm -hmm. and they brought all these weapons to all these hamlets and said look you're in charge of the weapons and it was all american-made modern stuff and of course the Viet Cong, who kind of controlled more or less they had the hearts of the people they took all the weapons so we supplied the Viet Cong with all these weapons <laughs> in the early 60s and it kept them going it genuinely makes me like I, all my information is from the Ken Burns documentary. Right. And I watch it. And every time I'm watching it, I by episode two, I'm like, what is going like? It's yeah, it doesn't make sense. Well, I don't know if this was in the Ken Burns documentary, but did you see the guy? It is. I think it is. I saw that Ken Burns. He's Beckwith with the guy and the, an advisor, Colonel Beckwith. Oh, yeah. Charging Charlie Beckwith. And he goes, they interview him and he go. Uh, what do you think of the Viet Cong? He goes, finest soldier I've ever seen. This is a 1960. He goes, what? The Viet Cong. He goes, best soldier I've ever seen. Oh, she had 200 of them under my command. And right away, you're like, oh, we should have realized yeah. something was up then. Well, they also, they'd been fighting for 30 years. Mm -hmm. These dudes have been fighting since like World War II. They didn't stop fighting. Really? From World War II until the end of Vietnam, they were fighting constantly. And their home territory. Yeah. And they're so small, they had to be crafty. They, all the tunnels, all the trails, they know everything. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Was that the first American war where, like, the American troops were like, what, what's the point of yeah. this? The first I think time Korea, like, I'm sure they were a little bit like, actually. Yeah, Korea, Korea, we did, we, MacArthur yeah. screwed up Korea. Yeah. MacArthur, everybody was like, don't do this. MacArthur's like, I love, the people loved him. Yeah. The Korean people were like, this guy's our savior. And they and he just was like a king over there. Yeah. And then he just said, we're going to do it this way. I forget. He landed on the coast. So he did something that was strategically a nightmare. And even his generals were like, don't do this. What are you doing? And he goes, I know what I'm doing. And <laughs> yeah, that guy, he had an like, ego, dude. That stinks. He referred to himself in the third person. Did he? he? Was fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah, he was wild. MacArthur was wild. Sucks. He might get a bad rap, though. I kind of like him. Yeah, no, he was beloved. Look, yeah. the people loved him because he... Japan loved it because after World War II, they were expecting, because they were so uh, horrendous during World War II, they expected him to really bear down. And he treated them like, he said, you treat these people like human beings. So Japanese. Japanese people treat him like a god. So he felt like a god. That's tough to shake off. That would get me. Yeah. If I was getting like samurai glory, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Even Dude's if like I, presenting you sword. Those yeah, cool I guess suits. I am, if yeah. I had to wear those cool suits, I'm like, who do I? I'll slash I think that's why God never even let me sell out like the beacon or something like that. <laughs> he keeps me at a level of three to 400 seats yeah. on the road. And there's a reason for it. <laughs> oh, man. So, the, yeah, what was it? So chronologically, the French. So we were like. Boys so it was a French them. colony. Then there's World War II. Yeah. Japan takes over. And, and like always when Japan would invade. 
every all the Asian countries were like, nice, finally the white colon, colonists are gone. Yeah. We're going to get treated well. And they immediately get starved to death and yeah. beheaded and fucked with. It sucks. So then when the Americans liberated Vietnam and the British, whoever, they were like, we love America. And then France after World War II, who just got their ass whooped. Yeah, yeah. They're like, actually, we want those colonies back. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And Vietnam was like, no. This is ours now. Yeah. We're independent again. So then. Do they have to write a letter to Vietnam like, hey, buddy. Uh, we're coming back. Bad news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry. We'll, we should start chronologically. Yeah. Let you. I'll, what, all you? I watch is Ken Burns. What? Oh, what are we talking about? Well, I don't yeah. know. Whatever you want. What you said. And then. <laughs> so then France, when they lost, you know what I mean? The Geneva uh, talks. Geneva. I think it was the first Geneva talk back then. Maybe not. But then. That was the best one. Was that probably that was the best, the best one? one. First, we were like, "Hey, I like Jenny, you know." And um, and then um, we went in. Eisenhower said, "We're just going to arm them in the fifties, you know. We're just going to keep arming them because we don't want communism to spread down there." And then, uh, because China, they were worried about China taking over Vietnam, but Vietnam wasn't worried because they were half communist. Like he said, by that point, Ho Chi Minh was pro-American until that horrible event where the France destroyed like all these innocent villages, and then. He turned on America because we supplied France. They we, didn't have, in, fair enough. In Bien Den Phu. Bien Bien Phu is when they got cocky. America yeah. started supplying France because mm -hmm. the only way the French could get anything was airdrops. Yeah. Because they were in Ufen Valley getting destroyed. Like 8,000 <sighs> French dudes died. Jesus. Uh, again, though, the Vietnamese lost like three to one casualties, but they were like, that's a victory. Yeah. They would get wiped out constantly. Yeah. that was, What was that one quote? Like, all we have to do is just stay here. And just die. I mean, yeah, that was the one. The, one of the uh, Vietnamese soldiers like, all we have to do is just not become extinct, and we win. And I was like, it's great. Yeah, that's tough. Well, that's, that's the sucks. problem with everything, right? I mean, anytime we go anywhere, the people that live there, they they have nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they're like, well, I'm, I, I, you know, you trap a, a trapped rat is going to fight to the death. Yeah, but so then, um, yeah, it got to the point where in the they're talking about like the United States was literally funding eighty percent of the French versus Vietnamese war. We were giving France 80% of the budget Damn. to win the war. Yeah. Yeah. France sucks. France did a bad job and then they left and then we decided it was such a, it's such a weird, I look at it so like psychologically, like what I understand about the common, the domino theory was part of it, but yeah. the psychological uh, mindset you put yourself into the, there was this guy Harkins, the general, he was the guy that ran it and he was the war, he is really responsible in many ways because we go back and tell the president and these guys, it's going good. But even then, <laughs> the presidents, the ambassadors, they all went along. It just goes to show. I mean, I quote my mother all the time. I rest us all. But she used to always say, people, and I see this deeper and deeper in everything, and this is a perfect example. People are attracted to bullshit. And if you offer them something that's quality or truthful and bullshit, they go for the bullshit every time. And I said to my mother at the time, I go, that's true most of the time. She goes, I didn't say most of the time. I said every time. And Vietnam's a perfect example because he was this guy, Van. This whole book, Bright Shining Lies, about this guy, Van. It was a, in Vietnam. For, he was the early guy. And he's like, look, we're going to lose. Here's what's happening. The Hamlets, we're giving away our guns. The communists are taking. We're bombing village. We were searching to destroy in 1963. Jesus. And he goes, we're, we're losing everybody. We got to either win them over through like social revolution, the corruption of, of the South Vietnamese. They're taking everything. Their special forces that we trained are destroying people. This is terrible. We're losing. And everybody, even the people that kind of knew better, just went like, oh. And then somebody was like, no, we're just going to do this. And they're like, okay, let's do that. And it yeah. wasn't that it was easier. And they almost like will themselves into like, if you've ever been involved in like a, TV or movie project, right? And everyone's sitting there and you start out going, it's got to be this. And then slowly you start to go, oh yeah, no that. And then somebody that wasn't involved in the first month walks in and goes, are you guys all gone crazy? And yes, you have. <laughs> and no that's one wants to say like, it sucks. They're like, no, this is good. You start to believe it. <laughs> yeah. You get in this stupor. And that's what I think happened in Vietnam. <laughs> with a, our military I mean, and all. You you're know. on the set of Aquaman 6, and you're like, this still is good. This, this is, is this might yes. be the best picture. And you ever go to a screening of a movie? No. And then I've gone to screenings of movies, mm. and you'll sit there and be like, that movie was really good. If you're around the movie, sure, and you, yeah. you know the cast, you know for yeah, the people. Yeah, you're yeah. Like, it was good. It was bad. And then if I've been with people that go, are you crazy? That way, shit. <laughs> and then later, I'm like, I was in a state of temporary insanity, and I feel like that's what happened. Oh. Uh. 
for also, years. Also, the, the domino effect bothers me. It just annoys me. You don't like, like dominoes? I, obviously, <laughs> you I, don't like, obviously, I crush dominoes. No, you don't. I'll tell you, you don't like. You don't like that uh, slippery slope theory. That's basically the domino effect, yeah. right? I agree. I don't when like it, it when it comes to well, why we were in Vietnam. Yeah, was they were like, well, if if China's influence and the Soviet influence gets Vietnam, they're going to get all of Southeast Asia. Yeah, and it's like, so well, but at the time, Russia had just taken all of Eastern Europe in the early fifties. So. In the grand scheme of things, considering how people felt at that time. I know they were scared of it, but it's. I mean, it wasn't like just some crazy. It was like, wait, they just took Czechoslovakia, Hungary, all these yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're moving. Everybody in Europe is on the same page. Everybody's like post-World War II. And they're like, oh, they're going to move. Because everybody knew even in World War II. Remember what Patton, Patton was like, we should go right into Russia. Yeah. Patton, by the way, a, a, an enemy of my family. Really? I, one of my uncles. Was uh, 19 years old, World War II, captured by the Germans, POW camp for a year. German POW camp, 90 pounds. He's 19 years old, maybe he's 20 by now. He's in the uh, hospital when they finally release him. Patton's visiting all the wounded troops. Then he gets to the POWs. They go, Do you want to? These are all the POWs. He goes, I don't talk to cowards. <gasps> Patton says, He goes, I don't talk to cowards. You're supposed to die with your unit. I don't believe in POWs. So my uncle hated Patton. Every, every <laughs> family gets together. People are like, Especially when the movie Patton came out. It was like, hey, George, you're going to go see the Patton movie? And he's like, his name was George, too. And he's like, ah, I beat it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he went and just snubbed the POWs? He he literally goes, cow, he called them cowards. Yeah. <sighs> My uncle's like 90 pounds. He's 19, 20 years old. I mean, like, one of the opening scenes oh. in Patton is when he's slapping a guy in the hospital. Oh, yeah. He's that's He's slapping right. him, calling him a fucking coward PTSD, in the that's hospital. Right. That's right. The PTSD yeah. guy. All right. Yeah, that's what a jerk. So, yeah, where are we at? We're saying, we gotta, we're saying that you don't believe in the domino theory. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand at the time there, you know, there's a hysteria. It's the same reason we went to Iraq. We were like, yeah. they're trying to kill us. They hate our right. freedom. They do. And after 15, 20 years, we're like, what was that? Right. There was no weapons. Yeah. And then, yeah, once, what, I don't know. Well, I've, I remember that George, remember the book I was talking about, the George Friedman book, where it was the next hundred years and they predicted all that stuff. Remember like two weeks before Russia invaded Ukraine? Yeah. That he was saying that U.S. is so far and ahead of everybody, like economically, militarily, that all they're trying to do is break up every alliance that forms. Yeah. So it's like they don't. It does, it's not about winning wars; it's about just to stabilize. But at this point, Russia was they're gaining. They're they were they were pretty powerful. They just got the nuke. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, but it he, was, by the way, to that end, I think it was Ellsberg, the guy with the Pentagon Papers, which was a big thing. But when it, one of these guys was looking into the Russia thing in 1960, he was working with a nuclear, nuclear, and it, he said it was shocking because they were like Russia, nu- they were nowhere in the same ballpark with us. They had nothing compared to us. Really? And the military just had this, you know, narrative in their head like Russia and us, and they were just child's play compared to us at the, at the time, you know, 58, 59, something like that. I think that was Ellsberg, Pentagon Papers, but I'm not sure, but some... Something like that. But yeah, that was the other side of it. Damn, so so even fighting that was against, bullshit. <laughs> but they did take all those countries. I mean, that was yeah, real. Yeah, you know? but all those countries are... Well, they, were they shit Eastern because Europe of that, Southeast though? Asia. But were, they, <laughs> but were they shit then or were they... Because of... Because people say the same thing about any uh, any colony, you know? Yeah, like you're talking like Macedonia, Bulgaria. And how... Imp- but this brings up the question BC. about capitalism versus communism. How important is free will? That's the question. So I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what this whole thing is about, right? Yeah, yeah. Or I, I think it's human organization schemes. Aren't there people at the top of communism who live like very well and kind of rule still anyway? Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just kind of like a which one do you want, peasants? It's like you get to compete and have fun, or it's like or you share. And it's you know, right? Yeah, but I mean, obviously, I, we, I mean, I'll I'll I like capitalism. Communism. I like the Don't idea of capitalism. <laughs> the what? Capitalism. I mean, obviously, we it's when it's unfettered, it's not going to work, but. The idea of capitalism I like because it f- appeals to human nature's greedy side, which mm. I feel like anytime you appeal to people based on something that's not so innocent, that's probably the healthy way to go because that's how people's nature is. It's not repressed. But if it goes too, f- obviously you can't have people just, you know, doing whatever they want. That's a yeah. problem. Just yeah, going I mean, so- into space. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. <laughs> just like guys just launching crazy. themselves into space. I mean, the results are in so far. It's one in terms Capitalism? of like remaining a thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's one. It's one. And yeah. It's winning. And currently. communism has to try harder to keep people from giving their opinion. So that means it's not a good system. That's true. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, it doesn't work very well. Either. We're we're, sli- we're we're getting we're dancing with that a little bit. Yeah, not being able to say stuff. So oh, absolutely. We'll see. Maybe that'll go well. Who knows? Maybe the whole thing will just collapse and we'll all fucking die. I said it was a it was a weird narcotic state where we you know it's been kind of a thing after World War II. It's gone now, but where we're like, no, we don't really we don't really fail. Everybody wants to do. Everybody wants this because it worked so well. Not just World War II. The Marshall Plan even worked because we're dealing with all these countries and suddenly they're coming back by 1960s, 50s. Germany's even back. So we're like the benign guys that we look, control things. At, but everybody's kind of like getting their thing. Who yeah. wants to be on the team? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we didn't realize it was a whole undercurrent. So like the overcurrent is Europe. Then the undercurrent is the colonies. So all the colonies were yeah. rebelling starting in the late 50s. Oh, yeah. From Africa to, you know, South America. And um, yeah, so there was that whole thing going on, you know. The vacay there, spots were popping There was off. so much going yeah. on. Isn't it weird? All the sandals. <laughs> sandals resorts. All the sandals resorts yeah. where they've had it up to here. Yeah. That makes so sense. So it was kind of a weird, uh, it was an interesting time. I can really see thinking. communism appealing to that. Yeah. You're down Oh, Cuba. Look at Cuba with the whole mafia thing. And you know, it was such an yeah. interesting thing where it was like, you know, they let all these capitalist things and then they were like, no. And Castro came in and, you know what I mean? They, even though Cuba failed, they didn't like the corruption level that was going on. The same thing with South Vietnam. Yeah. We that was the thing. We propped up some dumbass. Propped up a dumbass, and and we would never get rid of it. And then as soon as you saw that part, we were watching mm. it. Yeah, we propped up this dude who just immediately started persecuting the Buddhists. Absolutely, started. Yep. His wife was a yeah. fucking monster who was like, "Good, I'm glad they're burning themselves." Yes. His wife I mean, and his was, brother. Yeah, they were just morons. Yeah. Yes. And we couldn't back off because we we were like, it's still better than communism. Yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ho Chi Minh was kind of cool. Right, he liked us at the beginning. Yeah, he, was, he, was he wasn't like, totally into this thing, and then yeah, he, yeah, yeah. stuff. Like but assistant. he became yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. assistant manager. Now, did you know a lot of guys that were in Vietnam? I knew a few. Yeah, yeah. I was a kid. I was a kid doing the whole thing, you know. Yeah, and I remember as a little kid, you'd watch. It was on the news every every day at five and six o'clock. You'd see the footage from Vietnam. So it was like such a part. It wasn't like I was shocked because I wasn't from the generation before that. That was all I knew. I was seven, yeah. eight years old, nine years old. But I remember seeing footage of Vietnam all the time on TV in the news, and it was just a constant thing. And I remember one time in class, we were talking about Vietnam. This is probably 71, or maybe 70. And the teacher or the kids were going, yeah, Vietnam is bad. And this girl in our class starts screaming and crying because her brother got killed in Vietnam. So I knew, I knew probably three guys, older guys, they didn't hang out with me, but I mean, yeah. I knew three guys that were... Marines in Vietnam that got wounded, that came home, and they all had those cliche uh, Marine personalities. I mean, uh, Vietnam vet personality. Yeah. The army jacket by themselves, the big beards when they're home, heavy drinker, Damn. heavy smoker, you know, prone to outbursts, but still good guys. Like they were guys yeah. we like, you know, they weren't like people hung out with them and talked to them, but they had that other side to them. Partly from being in the war, partly from what they did, partly from what Vietnam did, and partly from their reaction when they came home. Yikes. It wasn't like you walk around, people weren't going, thank you for your service. Either, you know? Yikes. Yeah. That stinks. Yeah, so I knew a few guys, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing we were talking about. O'Connor brought this up. We were mm. talking about last night. He's like, imagine, so imagine today's college student. Imagine Jesus being Christ. a dude who got drafted yeah. and had to go live through hell, and then you get home. And one of these fuckers throws like a bag of piss at you and is like, baby killer. Like, yeah. Right. Oh, my God. That That's was... when I would join the Ohio National Guard and head, <laughs> yeah. I would head down to Kent State and say, fuck you guys. Yeah, true. Um, that's such, that's a, yeah. But it, but it was interesting that they all did have that personality. Yeah. Even the guys I knew, guy across the street, my friend's brother, was a Vietnam vet that didn't fight. He was a, a airplane mechanic. And even he was screwed up yeah my uncle my uncle was a marine and he never talks about it ever like literally never talks about one night he and i got drunk and he opened up about it really and he was it was wild he saw a fucking chinook get hit and just spun dudes flew everywhere i mean it was now my other uncle was in vietnam and he is a little more i don't he's a little more sociopath like psycho that's like Mm. I killed a guy. Yeah. And I was like, how was that? 
And it was just me and him. And he goes, it's incredible. <laughs> I was like, yo, <laughs> yo. I told you, I knew a guy who was a sniper and he was saying, yeah. you, he's like, you get addicted to the feeling of killing people. And he was like, he was a nice dude. He's like, I didn't have any, I didn't have like ill will towards people. Yeah. But he's like, I, you, I like would watch people eat dinner. And as soon as they finish, right in the head. He's like, well, by like the 12th one, he's like, you get like a God complex. And you're like, I'm ending this. God done. damn. Yeah. So you just my watch uncle, people my, hang out. The guy in Vietnam. I th- I've told you this before. It was, it was like a 90 degree trail and you couldn't see around the corner. So he's walking one way. A Viet Cong was walking up the path. He said they literally bumped into each other in the jungle. And then it was just a race to see who could get wow. their pistol, who could get their gun out faster. And he got his out. Woo! Jesus First. Christ! Now don't get. He's still. I mean, and then he got. He got hit with a. He got hit with a rocket propelled grenade. And he blew. He has his nipples missing. His calves. What? Off. Uh. Yeah, and he had to lay there because they're in the middle of a firefight. He had to lay there for three hours on the jungle floor. Like, I'm dead. I'm dying for oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. He's Nipple. a hero. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Fuck. and is it that different from war? Like, my father was in Korea. And mm. Korean and uh, war, and he said the most disturbing part was, which is still chilling, that the lieutenants or the officers would nightly bring in the Korean prisoners and beat the living shit out of them. And always like, hey, Brooklyn, you want a piece? And he's yeah. like, no, thanks. And they would just like beat the, just torture the guys, just beat uh. them for fun. So it was already starting to lose the. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The glamour then, of World War II. And then, but, but Vietnam is a different, like, I feel like they this this setup, even though it happened in World War Two, it happens in every war. The setup of search and destroy is what fucked them all up. Because here you are, you grow up in the fifties, you're watching these movies. You have a little bit, even if you're not innocent, you know, you know you're capable of, but you still. And then suddenly you're in the middle of this thing where they go, no, you have to burn all these hamlets because, like I said, the hamlet program, the Vietnamese took over the hamlets, so they go and the Vietnamese are in there, and whether they are or not. They're in enough where you're like, okay, it's them and me. And so you're torturing all these peasants out of their house, torture, torturing their it village. burning their... That's like the... That's yeah. the strategy. The, how long do they do that for? That's our strategy. How long do they do the that for? The whole time. The whole entire time. The whole... From the 1963. Yeah. From 1963. Jesus Christ. And they said even... That's what Morley, Morley Safer was... Uh, the fan, You know, the guy from 60 Minutes? Who, I always thought, oh, this an annoying guy, you know? But meanwhile, he was a reporter... And he had the, they filmed in 1965, torching of a Hamlet, 1965, early in the war. And that's when everyone started protesting the Vietnam yeah. War because they watched on TV. They're like, wait, this is like liberating France. What's going on here? It was just all these peasants running. They're torching the house and shooting the pigs. Like that was on the yeah. national news, on the Fuck evening Christ, news. That's what you were watching? Well, I don't remember that, but I'm saying, but people, yeah, it yeah. shocked the whole country. That's when the protest began. We were the good guys. We were always the good guys. We were always the good guys. We showing it like, really check good. us out. And everyone's like, boo. Or like, no, the news was like, hey. This is crazy. That's because the news was doing their job. True, yeah. And they're like, here's <laughs> yes. what's actually happening. <laughs> no, right. They just shot. And Molly Safer had to leave. Like, they were threatening him because they were saying he took it out of context. He didn't, which he probably <laughs> he took did. took it took, out of context. Well, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. They weren't saying that they had been getting shot. Like, Marines had gotten shot. From that village. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm saying it wasn't like, you know, but I mean, but no, they still, were it was a stupid strategy. You know? See, this is what happened. And, yeah. and it was crazy because the French had just done it before us. Yes. Mm-hmm. So they, they did this thing called pacification where they were like, right. we're going to, they tried to do the social set. Like they were like, we're going to help build your rice patties up. We're going to give you food. We're going to build schools. And during the day it worked. Mm-hmm. And then at night the Viet Cong would come in. Yeah. Take the food, That's take right. the fucking guns, hide guns in the villages, hide weapons, yes. hide soldiers. So then during the day, they'd come back and they'd just keep getting supplies and they'd yeah. do raids from the villages mm-hmm. with the weapon the French gave them. Yeah. And then so the French would come back and be like, we know you're harboring communists. Oh, geez. And they would burn the fucking village down. Yeah. And then we did that. We did the and exact did same thing. thing. And then the, under the thing of like, we don't want communism to spread, which is funny to be like, we don't want com- You want to be free, guys. So trust me. And you're like burning yeah. villages down. Like, trust me. This is well, better. It, and I think free we did the same thing kind of in Afghanistan, right? Mm-hmm. In Iraq. Where it would be like, we're going to give you guys money. Work with us. And then the Taliban comes in at night mm-hmm. and is like, puts a gun to their head and is like, well, you work with us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the whole problem with everything, right? Yeah. If you go to. Some, you know, 
if the cops go to a neighborhood bar, the only analogy I ever use in everything is a neighborhood bar. And um, but if they go to a neighborhood bar and go, listen, we want you, we we want you guys to do a couple of troublemakers in here, and the troublemakers are in there. Well, they're outside yeah, yeah, yeah. waiting for these guys to leave. Yeah. They're not there. They're only going to be there part. They know you're going. Yeah. Leave. You're not there to stay forever. So yeah. it always ends up screwing you, you know? Yeah. And if, if we don't kill them at night, they're going to come get beheaded. Well, isn't that what Vietnam. happened in Vietnam? I yeah. mean, once they took over. Exactly. They, they came by all that stuff. They just destroyed. They yeah. genocide got rid of everybody that bugged them. And they, everybody with a pair of glasses. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's like they. How'd you get those? They <laughs> literally went. Well, just anybody who's so sort yeah, of yeah, yeah. fancy themselves intellectual. It was like they, it's like the army came in and literally just rampaged through Bushwick, Williamsburg, and Greenpoint in the past three years. Nice. And just said, I everybody get it. Here I was, get it. Everybody here has been to a show at a bookstore. <laughs> line up. Yeah. Yeah. Burned bookstores. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I mean, that's the thing about, that's why I never really got into Vietnam. You know, I like the Civil War and World War II where it's like, yeah. it's kind of noble. Right, it seems and then, like, yeah. and then Vietnam is the first one that's like, <sighs> well, it's so. But even Korea was like a harbinger. It's all like Korea, so psychological. Yeah. And my another uncle who fought in World War Two and fought with Audie Murphy. Do you know who Audie Murphy was? No, who's that? He's a famous. He's the most famous World War War Two hero. Okay, like he they made him a movie star. He wasn't a good actor, but he was this legendary World War Two. My uncle happened to be in his unit. Oh wow! And he said that all the hype to show you the difference in the war. All the hype about him was was true. He goes, this guy was the bravest. He goes, he was so crazy. He'd run right into battle. Yeah. They were at Anzio. They were at Battle of the Ball. All these places. He goes, he would just run right into battle. <laughs> He's nuts. <laughs> and, and and in those days, they'd celebrate. Now, like, man, nah, the hero. Even, even uh, you know, any movie about Iraq, there's still an undertone of darkness. All the World War II movies, they're like, hey, there's no problem here. Yeah. yeah. Kick their ass. Yeah, yeah, like this guy's funny. great. You know, it had like a positive <laughs> like John, tone to John it. John Basalone. You know, What's that? that? Guy, he was a he was in the Pacific. There's a rest stop in New Jersey, like one of the first rest stops. That's what he got out of it. Oh. He got the Medal of Honor. He was he. That's awesome. It's in the Pacific, and the sh- like. He goes wild, picks up his gun without the fucking heat pad, just mows down the. J- and then he goes home. So, so they put him on a USO tour. Yeah. To send, bonds yeah. and he's like no i need to go back and fight yeah so then he goes to iwo jima and is like i'm gonna do that gun thing again what and he died oh no yeah he Bust died. Out the trick. but he got yeah yeah boy he, like, he was he does a side trace yeah 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 but my mom's got arrested three up. tours of vietnam he he really? did one and he's like sent me back and did another Whoa. and he's like give me one more who did it? My mom's cousin. Wow. He did three he tours? Fought, he did two more. He fought, three. Wow. He was because he was like, I'm not going back. I'm going to do it. And what did he end up doing after the war? Uh, I, I saw him like spazzing, fighting an arcade owner on the boardwalk one time. <laughs> 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 that was Charlie. He's a good man. He's a good that man. was Charlie, dude. Dude, he was. But that's the whole point, yeah. He was with my mom the one time when they were younger and he was sleeping in the car and some guy like screamed something at my mom and he like popped up and was just got out and beat the shit out. They were in traffic on the highway. Yeah. He beat the guy and throw him on the side of the road and he's like, come on, let's go. Imagine that guy. He's, he sees a woman. In the car, he's like, Fuck. The guy sits pops up. Yeah, pops up. Fresh from three tours. Yeah, I think it was like seventy four. Just pops up. Like what? Can you imagine three tours? I mean, that's a real. That's a. I mean, two tours is crazy. But at least you feel like during the second tour, the guy's like, "What did I say yesterday?" Yeah. But if you go for three, that means you're like in all the way. Yeah. That's when I told the guy, the dude I was talking to, it was actually is my ex father in law. I was talking to him. About, I was telling him about my mom's cousin. He's like, "Oh, that guy just likes killing people." Yeah, and I was yeah. like, eh, maybe. I mean, he probably just. Uh, there's also the guys. Everyone's got the thing. You go there, <laughs> you go there, and then you go home, and you're like, I can't be home Mm-mm. after. Yeah, you're just in the fucking jungle. Yeah, killing yes. people. Now you got to go pretend to be a human. Yep. Yeah. So like yeah. you get off the road for a long time. Yeah. Say it happens to cops. <laughs> it happens if, to cops if, to if, a lesser degree. A friend. What's that? Yeah. It happens to cops too. Yes. They, get, they get addicted to that adrenalized state. They go home. They're like, this sucks. Sure. And they stay there forever. And uh, but the other thing with Vietnam, which I've watched a lot of those uh, YouTube guys with the interview, and you see the similarities in them eventually. And one of them is that they said they got screwed. First of all, just imagine this: supposed to be the country sending all this money for aid. They one guy was several of them said the sea rations were terrible. He goes, mm. we looked at the date on some of them; they were Korean and World War Two. Yikes! That's how old the sea rations. Yeah. Were. Jesus! That they given to the troops. That's supposedly the richest time in our history. And the other one is the M14. They said the M16 got more guys killed when they switched to the M16 because Westmoreland wanted 
or one of these guys just it was like a vanity project the m14 wouldn't jam in the mud the oh, m16s that, yeah. jammed and they said guys would just be getting killed bayoneted to death oh, because it would Christ. jam and you couldn't unjam it oh. the, the the m14 was the early gun was better it sucks yeah america really fucked up i don't like it but yeah the whole thing just the whole thing was bums just, me out yeah and then each president had an opportunity to finend it yeah, that's right. And they all just keep dragging it out. But that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying about that yeah. state. Kennedy. Yeah, he was the, close to ending it. He was, He was, yeah, but yeah. he wasn't. Well, he, they, you know what I mean? they made like, sure he didn't. And they said, and this guy Van was talking to Henry Cobb at Lodge, who was the ambassador. Clo- all the guys who were close to Kennedy. And it was just one of those things where it's like, just at the last minute, it's like any other decision you've seen in any power person, where you're like, everybody has this logical argument, and then they go, Ah, no, I think this is better. Yeah. And you're like, what? Why? You don't even give us a reason. And he never give us a reason. It was. Uh, was there any kind of economic advantage that like was clear? I don't think so. Really? They didn't I don't even think like there make was any. any yeah, I there was know. nothing really there. I mean, there was babes, rubber. Babes. No, there was rubber. All the shit that was there was gone when we left. True, true. Yeah. Rubber, coconuts, all the rice. It was all gone. I mean, we killed it. Damn, that sucks. I mean, Agent Orange. I mean, when you think about it. Yeah, for a little bit. Agent Orange. Killing all the people. They said their their levels of whatever diox dioxin yeah. were three times anybody else by the time we left. And all the troops. I mean, doing his own troops is just crazy. I mean, that's the height of like uh, immorality. You know, to just yeah the guys that are there fighting, and you're just yeah. like yeah, well, you know, it's like no, no. The other ones you have to really try to be a little more careful with the opposite of what you're doing. It was really a weird situation, you know. Also, the French were using napalm too. They were before us. Yeah, they were. They were. We did everything they did. Sounds like a French the word. Exact Napalm. same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what that is? Yeah, that's just, is it, was gel. It? Yeah, <laughs> it's like petroleum gel, yeah. and they light it on fire, and you yeah. spread it if you like touch it. You, you don't have to light it. on fire; it just goes on your body. It burns. Yeesh. And water makes it worse, right? Because if you take yes, a grease fire, put water right. on it, it gets worse. Yeah, it stinks. And it, I mean, but France really wanted Vietnam, so well, they, they had it. them before that. Yeah, they wanted it back. Must I mean? They had it. They lost it. They're like, I think we can get this back. They want their baby back. So but spread what some is, fire on people. Yeah. What is <laughs> it about Vietnam? That's so because we apparently wanted it too. We went in there in the mid fifties and we couldn't leave. You ever go to a party and you're like, I gotta leave. This party's over. Oh yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's like you know, you yeah, I guess I'll do some coke. <laughs> yeah. You're saying it was, I guess too I will live it was too late. If only I had left <laughs> at eleven o'clock like I planned to. That's Vietnam. It's probably is just a psychological thing. It's like you want to be the best general. You start losing. You're like, got yeah. this. We got this. And it's like, no, no, no. We should have this. Just hear me out. This is my passion project. Yeah. This is my well, baby. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. Everybody was just about. The, you know, the military, like their job is to get more money for the military. Mm-hmm. How can you get more money if you're not in a war? True. So how did, what, what, what do you like? How does this thing progress? What do you, yeah. how does it end? What, what's going on? Vietnam? Yeah. I mean, it, look, it ended when we left. It was the most, it was really, they're lucky it was the mid seventies. It was like 75, that famous rooftop yeah, Saigon, thing. Saigon, yeah. They're lucky because by then everybody was, just, it was like the age of apathy when I was a teenager. People were just into drugs, you know, dancing. And, you know, it was just a very uh, hedonistic time. People were done. All the protesting that happened in the 60s, people were done by the 70s. You know what I mean? And they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so when people left, it wasn't even, there wasn't even outrage. It was like, oh, that was, that was awkward. That was a bummer. (laughs) That was just, yeah. People were just like, Yeah, coke and disco, yeah. And and you feel bad for all the people that, uh, you know, all the Vietnamese that, was still helping us by the end. Well, fucked. Yeah, like that. That they famous got that helicopter on the roof. The helicopter. On the that roof. picture. That's a long line. Yeah, and that's the last chopper. That's right. Those boys are sh- staying, and that's that's, that's like right. a negative time. Yeah. Oh yeah. When that chopper yeah. takes off, and you're like next in line. I I I've had, got that, I've had a similar experience. Earlier. I was at Longwood Gardens waiting for a shuttle to like go see the shuttle. Like <laughs> I was <laughs> like the last guy. guy. <laughs> I had to wait like 15 more minutes. I was like, yeah, I don't know what happened. It settled down. It's better now. No, it's not. It's, it's, not. it's not tearing. The damage is done. I mean, that's so, the thing. You, the power shift immediately. Yeah. And all the people, like, when you think about the people right now in your life, that you were like, ah, fuck you. And then if suddenly they're in power, they go, where is this son of a bitch? Doria, where does he live again? Yeah. And then, you know, you just hope they, you know, well, accidentally mistake you for Mike Feeney and kill him. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but what's it like? So you had you grew up watching Vietnam, and yeah. then what was it like for you to see like the Iraq War and all? Is that the older I get, the more no, I'm like, I, I saw this before. I believed that we that there were weapons of mass destruction. They got you too. They got me. I believed it all the way. I said, "There's got to be weapons of mass destruction. It wouldn't be this, you know. They wouldn't be on to this extreme after Vietnam. Yeah, they wouldn't be. If the, it wasn't our true, oh, they're not going to be fooled twice. Wouldn't be this diabolical. I said they can't be that stupid." You know, or diabolical. Either way, I said, "There's no way there's not weapons of mass destruction." It wasn't. I mean, I was a kid. Me, me and the Senate believed this. Yeah, you and <laughs> Hillary Clinton. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> I was. Only a few didn't. I was a kid, and it was 2003. Yeah. So I was fresh off 9/11. I yeah, was a yeah. Fuck, I was an eighth grade patriot. I had a bone to pick. Yeah. Oh, I was pretty yeah. much a troop. At yeah, this they point. had you. They had you. Four years later, I'd be going to West Point. Yeah, they had you. I was ready. Yeah. Yeah. They being my seat up. Iraq. I was pumped. I was yeah. watching the you remember when the you I like the fact the that he thinks he'd get into West Point. You know, that's a hard school to get into. I got it. He was in. You did? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm I very went. impressed. You did? Yeah. Well, I quit right away, but I went. Oh, that's a, that's impressive. Yeah. What do you have to get on your fan SATs to get into a place I like played that? football. That helped. Oh. Yeah, they got me in for that. Yeah. I got like an eleven something on my SATs. Yeah. Nothing. It's, I, yeah, it's a little better than me, but it's not that good. Little above <laughs> average. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Like a, that's potential eleven hundred. Like yeah. I was eleven hundred. For football, that's a fucking sixteen hundred. Yeah. Uh, His co-host says there's no porn. And I'm, can I'm, you, yeah. I, I don't watch porn, but can you explain why... Uh, you don't ever watch it? Yeah, but just out of lack of sex drive, not any other reason. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll hit it. I was I was just on the pern. I was in... Uh, I was on the road. Yeah. So I watched porn. Yeah. And I masturbate. Okay. Both? With hotel lotion. <laughs> With lotion? Why do you I use lotion? I use the lotion sick, there. Sick. Oh, yeah, nice shower. It's nice. I mean, the one nice thing about the hotel is you get we an extra. Sick. You get a I've towel. I've never drank enough with lotion. Ooh, give it a shot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it seems I'm too not a lotion guy. It's when too I'm indulgent. Home. It's too indulgent. Yeah, but I'm in a hotel room, dude. There's nothing to do. Indulge. You know Sunday what I mean? Wow. Off with lotion. It makes your dick look a shower, little younger, but uh, shower in a full body mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Wiping jizz and lotion. Sort of sad, like, tired. Yeah. Fuck, I got a show tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's before every time. Dude. First shows at like six. <laughs> Still it's daylight. Before it's every whack. Time. Of course. I'm not getting back from shows and whacking off. <laughs> yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah, I'm stumbling into the room like, yeah, we did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> another one, another hit. <laughs> no way. What's the longest you the haven't drank? What's the longest window? I'll go. I'll go like a week, occasionally. <laughs> what happened every once in a while something terrible will happen yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'll be like i need a the week death off of like a, i need a, a week family off. member yeah no like i'll do a podcast where i look like a dumbass <laughs> <laughs> shit faced i did that barstool case race and took a week off after What's that barstool yeah. case race? they brought me on you know roan from barstool at of course all? Yeah. me and him were teammates we did a case race see which team could finish you know, 24 beers race, yeah. first i won i had 16 beers in an hour <laughs> and it was which is a heroic amount of beer it was a huge mistake yeah. I got in a fight with like a producer no. yeah, yeah he came out and stood over me but he was, he was talking like, shit I'll fuck though. you up yeah. what did he like, think was gonna happen the producer when he pitched this idea that's I don't know the him. show went exactly how we knew it would yeah, which that's was, it was a disaster everyone was screaming over each other but entertaining everyone was shit faced everybody that liked Barstool hated me nice I woke up the next day with just like a thousand <laughs> tweets like Why? fuck this yeah. guy I got drunk and acted like a dickhead. As we I'm do. remorseful. Yeah. But it's great television. Bad. It's great television. It is pretty entertaining. I'm yeah. wearing a fucking, my face is painted. Oh, that's what the Eagles think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Have you been in a lot of fights? Like, have you been some alcohol-induced No, not scrap? since No, not since I was young. Used to. I was a young man. Yeah? Yeah. And would you start or would they start? No, every fight I've ever been in started with me getting punched in the face. Really? really? And then me be like, <laughs> <laughs> just squeezing a guy. You got a good yeah. chin, huh? Yeah. No, well. <laughs> Not visibly, but yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean visibly. Boxing-wise, yeah. metaphorically, yes. <laughs> yeah. Wait, really? People yeah. were checking you? Yeah. You're a Little big guys. fucking guy. Yeah, man. but I'm a big, fat guy. Like, not like, you can't tell. So, like, somebody would hit me and I'd... <gasps> Now, were you teasing him? Were you were you, you were like shitting on him. you, you were started it for sure? It. Were you just laughing at people? Because when you do that, it's yeah, infuriating. Yeah, yeah. When we were playing and you laughed at me, <laughs> it, it's it really changed what was going to happen in my day. Really? Yep. Yep. I, yeah, I got really. I yeah. You thought you were good. You thought you were so good at FIFA. Dude. Why'd you think that? You're you mean, so what, bad. Why at are you it? acting like I don't still <laughs> think it? So he's bad so at it. Bad. Well, he's never lost. Why are you acting like I still don't <laughs> think that? Him. 
Well, yeah, but in his mind, you know what I mean? We, oh, yeah, we, true. We, we, we tie. You understand? We tie. <laughs> Shane, he we, didn't tell me how to do penalty kicks. We, I never had to go to penalty uh, kicks. That's because bullshit. I always no, win. it wasn't that's penalties. That's bullshit. That was I the always second win. game I, I didn't know him. how to do it. And then with you, you scored one goal, kind of, and then the other one was luck of the draw. We create our own realities. That's what's <laughs> yeah. happening. That laugh right there is why you got punched in the face by Smokey. <laughs> that laugh right there is it's yeah. like my, my, my hand balls up when you do that laugh. Yeah. Look, you played your heart out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. tried your best. <laughs> I got in a lot of fights when I'm younger. I wonder why. They always punched me first. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you go two weeks. Yeah, I think I could go, go two, two weeks. weeks. But here was the thing: I was gonna do sober October with those guys, but That's we great. got fucking Skank Fest coming up. Oh, impossible! And I'm not doing that sober. Shout to Skank Fest, man. Yeah, best comedy festival. And I was not gonna around. drink today. You looked at your schedule and you're like, oh, I'm gonna have to drink yes. this month. I'm absolutely gonna drink that day. But there's you, no chance I'm not drinking there. But what if you supplemented with something else? Then I'd be doing. Then you're not Molly. sober. Yeah. Yeah, have you I done, did ask that. Have you, oh yeah, we had I don't that think any alcoholics are like I'm sober. I do uh, tons. Actually, of, actually yeah, they yeah, all yeah, do. I do tons of heroin. Every, I'm every comedian in New York yeah. is like I'm sober. They're high as fuck. They're doing coke, really? smoking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not list soda. <laughs> oh, but so I'll name soda. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll throw my best friend under the bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll destroy that relationship. Who cares? Yeah. you know. But, He's high but more than just weed. I don't count weed as. I don't think weed is bad as. Yeah, I don't do either. I don't think weed is as bad as alcohol. No. Yeah. But no. it's also not as fun. Yeah. Well, it depends who you are. Some people have way more fun. fun dude. Alcohol's the best. It, it is the best drug. The Without best? Molly's, Molly is good. Have you Molly, done Molly before? Molly's good, but best. okay, here's, here's what I'm like thinking. That's a, that's a, a Molly fucking what rules, What are you like dude? on Molly, dude? Uh, Come on, dude. There's happy? a whole show about it. Boy. Quiet. Love on the spectrum. Okay. <laughs> I promise you, I promise you he is the most fun. True. I just sit there, I go, I want hugs and kisses. <laughs> I love hugs and kisses. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, um, yeah, the alcohol, it is the joy for cost, right? Like with Molly, I don't know if you, I'm like destroyed for two days really? afterward. It breaks me emotionally. But with alcohol, I'm like, ah, maybe I might be a little fucked up the next day, yeah. but for how good I feel. Why, you don't get depressed I, after Molly? No, not really. Not compared to, like, a hard alcohol and cocaine night. Most depressed. Oh, but Coke fucks. Coke, Coke destroys oh, me. No, I haven't no. done that in, it's been weeks. Are you a psychedelic guy? <laughs> 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 no, I, I did do psychedelic. Yeah, I like psychedelic. Mushrooms are nice. I just did some mushrooms two mushrooms weeks ago. Mushrooms seem fun. They were great. Mushrooms are awesome. I heard if you had a bad mushroom trip, though, you're fucked. I heard that about mushroom, and I heard acid. You're like never the same. You've been I had a acid pretty came. negative experience on mushrooms once. I took like seven grams, Jesus. which is yeah. It was I was on Molly. Yeah, I thought it was going to be funny. That's like eighteen Bud Lights in an hour. That's yeah. yeah it's it's worse. This you, is much I worse. was like <laughs> this I couldn't is definitely see worse. anybody you look at has like multiple eyes and heads and shit. Like you fully hallucinate. Yeah. And then I was like seeing my own death. Over and over again. How'd you die? How do you, so I literally the had the ego death. Yeah. I actually had the ego death. How did how it was did an you overdose die? and I'd stop doing coke. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. It was scary. Wow. Laying there and I could see like paramedics shining lights in my eyes. And then I would wake up and my friends would be around, like, oh fuck, he's dying on the floor. Yeah, it was terrible. Well, how do you know which drug killed you? I just figured it was coke. Could have been cirrhosis kind of, the of the liver, though. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't just, out of nowhere, at a party, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo. That's yeah. so crazy that Fuck you're like, up. I'm only going to stop doing one drug. I yeah, realize I'm going to die. That was the drug. And fentanyl is everywhere. You just yeah. guessed, dude. That's Yeah, the fentanyl I knew shit it was is coke. scary. Okay. <laughs> I knew in my heart it was cocaine. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. I mean, cocaine sucks every time I do it. I mean, it's fun to do. Yeah. It's kind of the most just, fun doing it. I think it. you just cut out the drug that you already wanted to cut out. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. But I don't do other drugs other than, I don't even do shots. I drink fucking Bud Light. Mm. Mm. No weed? I hate weed. You get paranoid? Yeah, real paranoid. Yeah, same. I don't, see, I don't see you as like a psychedelic guy. Mushrooms are pretty sick. Yeah, I'm like surprised by that. Mushrooms and Molly, it seems like universally people enjoy it. Yeah. You, you don't though. No, I thought the Molly I fucking you know? love, man. Mushrooms I do, doesn't make anything. We should do but, Molly. Yeah, I told I you that about you, this. I wanted to I do said the, that. I said, let's do Molly on the you show. Did, but I, have you tried the Tesla pill? No. So it's an ecstasy pill. I've heard about this. Okay. And we've talked about Philly, the podcast. You know, it I've is heard about this. fucking <laughs> yeah. unbelievable so, because it's Molly is just the good feeling, but it doesn't have any of the uh, coke feeling. You know, you know, 
the cold fella. Yeah. So they, they put just enough in there where you like got some energy. I want to get the music going. I want to dance. Do you dance? Yeah, I can. I can cut it. You're a, a dancer. So like, let's let's have <laughs> let's. Tell me, hit that gritty out there, son. He did. <laughs> Are you sturdy, bro? No, no, he's very sturdy, and he did it after the victory. Oh. Yeah, which was which was crushing. Quite infuriating. Yeah. Every, every time I do Molly, I don't get like I'm not like sexual at all. Yeah. I'm just. It's just nice. Yeah. What makes you sexual? Yeah. <laughs> what makes me sexual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't see you as a sexual guy. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, lotion I'm not. in the hotel room? Yeah. Lotion in the hotel room. Yeah. 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 Pornography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching a fucking mom get stuck under a fucking bed. <laughs> is, that, is that your genre? Yeah, that's, that's, I, yeah. Step or, step or full I'll toss butt? toss it in there. I'll toss it <laughs> full butt. Because <laughs> that's a big difference in the I want community. them to say, my actual son, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Biological son, what are you doing back there? <laughs> uh, but yeah, Molly's, uh, it's great. Yeah. We should do it together. We should have done fucking ecstasy on this one. <laughs> that would be Wait crazy. a minute, hold on. No, no. I got to cancel. I'd be so happy <laughs> no, to cancel. No, you can work out. I'd be so happy to cancel this fucking gym. No, no, you have to. <laughs> I'd be so no, happy. We're going like, to go to the gym. Look, I need go. this. Dude, hold on. Hold That'd hold be on. a good pump. You'd have yeah. a great pump. Yeah, can you imagine doing deadlifts, yeah. huge boner, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> normally yeah. the dick you and get, then dropping it back you down? You get like Adderall dick. You get, like when I do it, my yeah, dick's yeah, yeah. gone. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait a minute. It's gone. You need to take a shot with it. You can do a body shot out of it? It's just reverse? Yes, it's disgusting. I thought we had You didn't bring any? No, I left it out burning my Why are you angry? No, I'm just, it's a crazy thing to be like, oh, I forgot my wallet. <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot all that ecstasy. <laughs> I think we I think we need to have a night. Would you just casually do it in the middle of the day? Like, if it was here, would Fuck you? Fuck no. Oh, right? If we all did it right now, together. I would do it. Together, yeah. That's now, let's wild. do it in the daytime, because it's Group hard to sleep way afterwards. Better. Yeah, you know I guess. What I mean? Like, dessert, you want to share with somebody. That's like a CrossFit guilty. class. Yeah. It'd yeah, be yeah, nice. Yeah. Like, let's go through it together. Yeah. Yeah. It's also yeah. comedians work at night, so like we could do a podcast high, but you're not going on stage on Molly. No. I mean, that was the first time I ever did Molly. And how was? I was on stage. And it was the craziest <laughs> fucking thing. Like, <laughs> so during the pandemic, we would have shows at Helium. Yeah, and that they Helium would just, is a comedy club in Philly. Yeah, Philly. They would yeah. let us let me book the show, bring our friends, and then yeah. hang out after. It was the only place we could like go to a bar. So Big J would come down every week, and we would he would bring Molly. Right. We would all do Molly. And then it was like me, Norman, and Big J in the green room. And he was like, come on, guys, do it. And Norman was like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> he was so afraid of it. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, do it, you motherfucker. Love. Yeah. Love. I feel love. <laughs> he, took it, he took it and freaked out and left. He got on, a, he got on the Chinatown bus back to no. New York. <laughs> he was on Molly on the bus. No. Like, Oh no! <laughs> Martin Norman riding the Chinatown bus is the saddest it's, part of that whole thing. So what sad. the fuck are you doing? Well, I took it after I went because I was hosting the show, and Jay was like, "Here, take some." So I was like, "All right, fuck it." And I took some, and then while Jay was closing the show, he was like, "Shane, come out here," and I was like, "Oh fuck!" And right when he said, "Shane, come out here," I just felt a wa I, a wave of like, and I never did it like that. So I like felt it. And I was like, whoa! Like <laughs> literally, like it makes your knees buckle. Yeah. Like I was like, whoa, <laughs> shit! And he brought me on stage, and he was like, I, I couldn't talk. I got on stage, and I was like, <laughs> I was yes, like, everybody, dude. I just, I'm on ecstasy right now. And then they were all like, yeah. going crazy. Yeah. So I felt that, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, yo. I was like, dude, that's so nice of you guys. <laughs> and then Jay left. He left me on stage. On stage yeah, and fun. I just had to, I, I couldn't talk. I literally was like, guys, I have to go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. How long ago was this? Uh, it was first, it was during the pandemic. It was oh. right when the pandemic oh, started. That's the first time you ever did Molly? That was the first time, yeah. Oh shit! Oh, yeah, then we did it every other week. We, <laughs> we did it every other week for like four oh, months. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like more people from Philly need to do Molly. I say Philly specifically, or like Pennsylvania. Philly, people. maybe Boston. Like there's yeah, a blue, like I think blue collar people need to do more drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those places that don't have any problem with addiction, like they should really get into. Yeah, <laughs> well, get don't get addicted to opiates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boston, yeah, get them yeah, off yeah. opiates. That's my oh, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get them on. That would help. God damn. Yeah, yeah they are on opiates. I don't care if you're dying. I just want you to be nicer. Yeah, Kensington. Yeah. Yeah, what I got to hang out with the dog, dude. Nate Diaz. Linked, linked. I did it, dude. What's I up? joined Steve Gerben oh. with Nate Diaz. Dude, what was that? You know what that was. <laughs> it was exactly <laughs> how you think it would be. Gerben wore like a uh, wrinkled old navy flannel, button down, uh, short sleeve button down. 
to like a cholo to dinner. I mean, it's it, West Coast Gerbin. It was it was West Coast Gerbin. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. Gerbies was afraid to fly. Oh, he's fuck. afraid to fly. How was that? I meant to ask you about that. It was that. so fun. Oh uh, yeah, I was texting. What you, hit, you. What'd you like, hit him with? Right before, right before takeoff, the pilot gets on. He's like, uh, "Looks like we're going to be hitting turbulence throughout the flight, so yes. seatbelt's going to be on." Basically, the entire, like he was like, "This is going to be a rough ride." That as soon be- as he said it, I just looked at Gary and like, "You ready? How you close? Were, how close were you to him?" He was he was directly behind me, so I was reaching back and oh, grabbing him. God, I would sit up on my seat and turn around and look at him. <laughs> yeah, it was that fun. would be fun to go down just to torment him the whole time. Like, yo, we're actually. I told we're you, we're dying die. now. We're oh die. God, <laughs> sorry, dude. Yeah, you shouldn't have got on the plane. This was a risk that you should have. You, you agreed. knew. <laughs> you knew this. You was knew a risk. in your heart that you were gonna fucking die in a plane crash. And you're right. And you cursed me and got on a plane with me. <laughs> what the fuck, Steve? Steve, you blew it. Yeah, no, but how Gerby, was he? How Gerby was he was handling? Great. How was he handling the turbulence? Gerby, I'll tell you what, Gerby's a real party pooper. What? He doesn't stay out late. Although he did party the the first. There's a there was a sick pool at the hotel. <sighs> Gerby's had a couple of drinks and was really? he gets loose. He was like Very a Jew in fun. Miami. Yeah, he dude, unbuttoned the flannel a little. We we were <laughs> we're at the it was the it's called the Roosevelt Hotel. It was it was fucking that sick. sounds nice. It's like hot L.A. people around this pool. Yeah, me and Gerby's come down to the pool, dude. <laughs> the two kings, just dude. luminescent kings, he, dude. dude. Just the two pale kings, kings dude. dude. <laughs> with two of the fucking grossest dudes in the building. You're men beyond the wall. Gerbin comes down with his fucking goggles. He wears goggles. No, stop. He wears fucking Why? tight speedo goggles. Why, dude? Why? He got in the pool no. and sat in a fucking tube, dude. He got Does he tube. wear them as a joke? He genuinely- no, he's wearing them. Why? Because he has one contact because he's got one fucked up eye. Does he, have, does he have monocle? Uh, speedos? He has a monocle contact. Does he have a, mo- like a <laughs> yeah, monocle? Basically. He should do monocle speedo. He's got a patch fucking speedo. That'd be fucking nice. You can't wear speedos without looking absolutely ridiculous he unless looked, you're an Olympic swimmer in, in like a speedo. He looked, he looked insane. Goggles in the pool looked so fucked up. Goggles in the pool by yourself at first. He got him by himself and was just sitting in an inner tube. I've never seen somebody care less <laughs> no, than this, dude. dude. Yeah. That's funny. Then he got hammered that it, night. To keep the goggles on? And he brushed his teeth with his preparation H. <gasps> <laughs> no. Yeah. Kirby's had a trip. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, How'd yeah. How'd that feel? Uh, probably probably, felt probably great. fucking insane, dude. The taste of that. Oh. Yeah, because his fucking contact was out. Kirby's has fucked up eyes. True, yeah. It's uh, fucked up. But yeah, I was happy to see just him and Nate Diaz in the same room was... All I've ever wanted. That's literally fucking, the opposite. Dude, fucking, that was the yin and yang. Yeah, We're the sure. opposite of people. The most opposite of two people. For sure. I've never seen a difference. It's full of antiadromia. Oh, man, the That's squad. An dude, the dude. squad I brought to. We went to dinner with Nate and his friends. Yeah. The squad that I brought was Francis Ellis, Ian nice. Fidance, nice. Steve Gerbin, and McKeever, and me. Again, we sit down. Francis goes immediately. I and the whole time I was like, finance is going to fuck this up. Yeah, he's easily the number one guy who's going to ruin this and be like, Nate, do you like ska? Oh, <laughs> he fucking is so annoying because <laughs> uh, he's happy. So it's annoying to be around. Bothers and, you. Yeah, he's enthusiastic and happy. Really? Ian, you're going to catch a, the bug. He's a great dude. You're going to I know you're going to catch the bug. Yeah, I don't think I am. Do you listen to you Mighty Mighty Bo- you listen to Mighty Mighty Boston's lately? No, pretty tight. Finance might finance rides a bike around with a fucking his he has a Bluetooth speaker. Jam ska. He jams. He's the only white person on earth that does this. Dude, we gotta start. It is time for white kangs to start blasting on Bluetooth. <laughs> see, how, how, see how they like it. Just ride up on the Adunde <laughs> Festival like with it, Mighty Buddy Boston's on yeah. our mongooses. Uh no disrespect. We <laughs> s- yeah. We sit down immediately. At this table, Francis is sitting. Mm-hmm. We had like a square table. Francis is sitting across from Nate. And he's like, Nate, oh boy. I have a story for you. As soon as he said, I'm sitting across. You're like, me a punch. You're talking like, like a Shut punch. the fuck up. No, he told some story about getting cheated on. He's like, my girlfriend fucked a guy at nice. the time. Nice. And then he and I talked it out. What did he say? That was the, like the gist of the story. While he's telling the story, I'm sitting there like, stop. What the fuck are you doing? Dude? What was you ruined saying? the cool time. And Nate responded by being like, oh, you talked it out. I would have fucking killed him. He was like, 
Nice. <laughs> Good story. His Francis. Twitter is so fucking funny. Who's? Nate Diaz's his Twitter is just him being like, that guy's a pussy. Fuck yeah, that yeah. His Twitter is the, the best funny Twitter shit. on earth. Tim is like, fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck you. Oh, that guy's a loser. <laughs> yes. Tim be like, I would beat his ass all yeah. day long. It's all it is. Yeah. Then him retweeting whatever. But Tim be like, that guy sucks. <laughs> yeah. He's a pussy. There's Nobody can fight. Yeah, because there's dudes fighting. They, they're like ducking him. They got him on ice, dude. Let him fight, bro. He's a money fight. You got I don't, Yeah, it's fucked up. That was so funny. I was f- certain Conor McGregor. Whenever I see like a montage of a dude winning, I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah. No one's going to beat this guy. Yeah, of course. And then Nate Diaz beat never the fuck lose. <laughs> Nate Diaz whooped his ass, dude. <laughs> made him quit. <laughs> he made him roll over and quit. I mean, dude, they had edit, They edited the shit. They were like, Mystic Mac, he can predict. I'm like, damn, this guy can definitely predict yeah, whatever's going to happen. He's got his ass kicked. Yeah. Turns out Nate called it. He was like. It's going to be a long fucking night for this, dude. It would be your ass. <laughs> it was a sad night, dude. That is very funny. Mystic Max never been the same. No, dude. You he, can't. He killed him. He did. He did. Because when you now talk that much now shit. Now he's out of his mind, dude. You're like, you're a, lo- you're a loser. Did you see the video of the guy who like stunk? It was like a small, I don't know if it's like a Mexican boxer, but he like he stunk at talking shit. He came out and said, like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna beat your, your fucking ass. And like he couldn't. He sucked at talking shit. Yeah. The guy was sitting there like, all right, and then just beat the fuck out of him. Wait, the guy who, oh, wait. It was just a boxer. A dude was trying to talk shit. He was trying to really. Like, and, and, and like, you're, you're, and he just did so bad. And the other like, guy was like, all right, I'm going to fucking kill you. The guy was just, the guy was literally laughing at him while he was like, he was all like dripped out. It was like, yeah, that's why, like, when I come in, I, like, I'm going to beat your ass. And the dude was just like, all right, man. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Whooped his ass. <laughs> Sucked. So that was a big victory. Got That's the, the boys. Got the boys out well, there. It was exciting because it was a incidental running. Really, Nate and his bros just happened to be at the same hotel. That's tight. So I was I was about to come down to the pool. Yeah, and McKeever and Gerben were already down there. And McKeever texted me. He was like, "I'm ninety percent sure Nate Diaz is here." I was up in my hotel room like, "Yes, I have to take my <laughs> Nate Diaz T-shirt off because I was wearing one." <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. That's all I have. Yeah, true. His buddy Nick sent me a box of Nate Diaz T-shirts. What are you going to do I now? Have three t-shirts and then 15 Nate Diaz represent t-shirts. Yeah, what are you going to do besides wear? <laughs> That's what I wear. So I was like, all right, I can't wear this. If that guy's down there, I can't wear this dude's merch. True. What'd you switch it up to? Uh, cool Nick Rashford t-shirt that he nice. gave me. Tight. So I got <laughs> a different guy's t-shirt. And I came down and I was like, oh, fuck, he's not going to remember me for sure. He's going to think I'm a dumbass. And I like walked up and I was like, hey, uh, and he was like, Shane, what up? I was like, yes, yes, yes. Do you want to hang out? Oh, what are you guys doing tonight? Do you guys want to? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm down for whatever. Whatever you guys are doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such a bitch. Nah, dude. That's tight. It was, it was, I was so happy. That's fun. Dude, I was so happy. Pool parties oh, you know, are the best. So then we're out, we're out to dinner and I was like, oh shit, I, these guys asked me to do a show. Do you guys want to come see me do stand up? I had had a couple glasses of wine. Really? And I was like, don't worry. I'm going to get on stage, show you guys. You guys have never seen me do stand up. Turn it just, around. Just watch. You guys are going to think I'm cool. I get up there. I go last on this show. Everybody's bombed so far. <laughs> Terrible crowd. I get on. First two minutes, I'm killing. Nice. First two minutes. So after those two minutes, I start showboating a little. I know Nate's in the crowd. I want to look cool. Yeah. I was yeah. like, Pfft. Maybe it wasn't the crowd. Maybe it was you guys. <laughs> Hit him with a little fucking, I'm a New York guy, dude. This is a li- <laughs> I'm not one of you LA pussies. This is a little different. Damn. Then I proceeded to bomb for 13 minutes. <laughs> it was so bad. It what, was so what bad. Lost him? Probably me getting arrogant. Rubbing in it in two minutes, face. Being like, maybe it's not the crowd's fault. Maybe you guys kind of suck. Anyway. Oh, and the crowd was like, we don't like that. Yeah, and the crowd was like, who does this guy think he is? No, I think it was probably just poor performance and alcohol. True. Drinking before a show is uh wine of all things. Why I was I was yeah, I was it's like King Energy too. I was like actually a little drunk. Really? Yeah. Yikes. No, that's not good for stand up. No, dude. I, I get the very few times that I've gotten like inebriated from alcohol and did stand up, I I suffer from like I think I'm killing. Yeah, which that can be very funny. And yeah, especially if your yeah. friends are in the room. Yeah, this was just my ex wife. Oh, I was just kind of like pretty good, right? And she was like, "Yeah, it was great." And I was like, "Did the math?" And Why I are you think saying I, it like that? I might have recorded it on my phone, the oh, set, and I listened God. back, and I was like, "I actually didn't do very well at all." Oh shit! <laughs> Damn it! Fuck! Yeah, that one that one hurt. Yeah, that stinks. Um, yeah, it was it was a great overall trip. 